Hey, you know, I'm always learning. I'm always learning and I try to take something from every situation that comes up in life. Life is always going to pose test. Life is always going to pose certain hardships. Life is always going to be life. And last night was most certainly one of these times where, boy, I'm just really glad things didn't get to where I was ready for them to go. You know, I'm not proud of this situation at all. This is not something that I'm trying to glorify. This is not something that I'm trying to tell you guys about in an effort to try to make myself seem like some type of a, a badass or any kind of a tough guy. I don't try to carry myself in that way at all, but I do want to say this. You know, there are times when I most certainly am ready to make the wrong decision and I just got to try to do better. You know, last night, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, I tweeted something out saying something along the lines of like, all jokes aside, you know, I almost got in a fight while at dinner with my wife because this guy disrespected me and I was still really worked up about this situation when I tweeted that and this started an entire Twitter storm of responses and, and just all sorts of craziness. But I did tweet out this morning, you know, after sleeping on it, after having some time to cool down to, you know, get my bearings in order to get my thoughts together. You know, I kind of feel I kind of feel stupid about the whole situation. I'm going to share with you guys the story of what happened last night. I feel like you guys deserve to know. And I'm also doing this because I want to get this off of my chest. I, I really do. But last night, me and my wife, we go out to dinner. It's Friday night and we go to a spot that, you know, we normally go to. We've been here a couple of times in the past. It's one of the places locally that we enjoy going. And you know, when we go there, we sit at the bar, we just walk in, we go right to the bar area, we order our food, we get a couple of drinks, we're just trying to relax. It's been a long week, you know? And I'm not gonna justify this in any type of a way. I wanted to just enjoy my night with my wife. I wanted to get a couple of drinks, so did she. She had a long week as well. We just wanted to chill. We go in here, we're sitting at the bar, we're drinking our drinks, we're eating our appetizers, and you know, there's a lot of commotion going on at the bar. There's a lot of people who are ready to just uh, let loose for the weekend. You can definitely tell they're in there taking shots, they're taking these things called picklebacks. I just learned about what a pickleback was uh, last weekend going to this Dave Matthews concert. This is a shot of Jameson with a chaser of pickle juice. It doesn't sound very good to me, but you're talking about at least 10, maybe 15 people who were taking these shots. And there was this guy who definitely wasn't a part of this group. This group was a bunch of like black chicks. And there was this one lone white guy who was kind of like sitting between me and my wife and this group of girls who were ready to get the weekend started. They were ready to get turned up. So this guy's like filming these girls taking these shots. He's not a part of their clique. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. I'm just going to, I'm going to run this down for you exactly the way I remember this. He was taking like a Snapchat video, whatever. I definitely could tell he just wasn't with them. So as me and my wife are continuing to just enjoy ourselves, you know, he starts a conversation with me. I can't even remember exactly what this dude said at first. I don't remember. I learned that, you know, he's a cook at another restaurant that's local in the area. And, you know, he's telling me what he's doing for a living. And then he asks me what I do. And to be completely truthful with you guys, I'm going to be, I'm just going to keep it 100. You know, I don't like telling people what I do for a living. I don't, I have a hard time trying to explain to people, hey, I, I make videos on YouTube. That's what I do. And I try to not say that sometimes. I really do. When we were on our honeymoon down in Key West, I literally told some people down there I was a brain surgeon. It would be easier for you to understand that I cut heads open for a living than to understand and for me to try to explain that, you know, YouTube is my full-time job. He asked me what I did for a living and as much as I didn't want to say that I did YouTube. In fact, I didn't even say that at first. I said to this guy, I said, I work online. I got a business online. And he says, well, what exactly do you do online? And I just dove right into it. I said, you know what? I make videos on YouTube. I got a pretty popular channel. This is what I do. So he kind of was like taken aback for whatever reason. He's like, you, you do what? You, uh, YouTube? I know what YouTube is, but what do you mean YouTube is your job? And the way that he's kind of talking to me is almost almost borderline like aggressive. So now 
I'm starting to really get on edge about this whole situation. I'm with my wife. I'm trying to enjoy my night with my wife. I really don't even want to be having this conversation with you. And there's a lot more things that happen that I'm getting ready to share with you guys that make me go from zero to 100 real quick. And I'm ready to just, there ain't even going to be no stopping me at this point. But again, this dude's kind of uh, responding to me in like this aggressive manner. That's the first thing that really gets my little alarm bells ringing. From the conversation about YouTube, this guy immediately asked me if I smoke. And he's talking about weed. He ain't talking about nothing else. He's like, do you smoke? I said, no, I, I don't do that. I can't handle that personally. It's just not for me. And I don't know if this guy maybe got like offended because I said that I didn't smoke and it's not for me. Maybe he thought like, I don't know what he was thinking. But I'm going to tell you this. I gotta throw this in here as well. This guy, you know, he would go on to admit to me that he was an avid weed smoker, but I could tell just by looking in this dude's eyes because his pupils were the size of cartoon characters. I could tell that this guy's issues were far beyond anything that had to do with just some smoking. And plus this dude's demeanor and his behavior kind of gave me that indication as well. So now more alarm bells are going off. Mind you, the entire time this dude is trying to talk to me, and at this point, I'm really just trying to separate myself from the conversation. And I'm not trying to be rude about it. I'm, I'm really not. But mind you, the entire time that this dude is basically interrogating me, that's pretty much what this situation felt like, was an interrogation. He's doing so, and I'm looking dead in this guy's eyes, but he's doing so all the while, cutting his eyes at my wife. And I catch this dude doing this at least three times. At least three times. Maybe even... Way more than that. I, I don't know. But I know for a fact it was at least three times. So now I'm ready to call this dude right there. Like, why Why are you looking at my wife, man? And I don't want you to get the wrong impression about, like, me and, like, a jealousy type of thing. Because now I'm in, like, this protective mode. Because you're sitting here almost being aggressive with me, basically interrogating me at the same time, and you're also cutting your eyes at my wife. You know, it's almost like you're sitting here trying to feel us out. Like, maybe you might want to do some harm to us. And I'll be damned if I'm going to let anything like that happen. I'm trying to tell you, I ain't no big bad dude. And I've lost more fights than I've ever won. But I had already measured this dude up. And by me looking this dude dead in his eyes, I knew this dude was not looking for these problems. And I was, I'm telling y'all, I was on my way to the point of no return. I wasn't there just yet though. After this guy asked me what I did for a living, asked whether or not I smoked, had been steadily cutting his eyes back and forth at my wife, he started asking me about the type of videos that I create. I'm trying to explain to him all about what After Prison Show is. And I'm also explaining to him one of these big projects that we're currently working on with, you know, trying to help somebody in the local community who's suffering from what we feel is a pretty bad addiction problem. This is where the conversation was going to go from zero to a hundred real quick. Because I, I'm telling this guy, I'm like, you know, we really try to do some positive good things. Well, this guy is listening to what I'm saying, but I can just see it in his facial expressions that he's just thinking everything I'm saying is like BS. And I'm getting more mad as I continue to talk and I'm wondering to myself, why am I still talking to this guy? But with his facial expressions and just giving me this vibe like this is not going to be a good thing at all. Nothing good is going to come from this situation by me continuing to talk with this guy. And you're probably wondering yourself, well, Joe, why, why did you continue to talk with this guy? I ain't got an answer for you for that. I, I really, I don't know. And you know, I definitely probably should have just stopped the conversation. And you know what? I even did try to stop the conversation. Not yet, but you know, I would end up trying to stop the conversation. As I'm telling this guy about the positive good things that we attempt to do with the After Prison Show, he says, so what you're telling me is, you're sitting here trying to help people get sober, yet you're sitting at the bar drinking a beer. It should have probably happened earlier. It probably should have happened when I noticed this dude was cutting his eyes back and forth at my wife. That should have been the reason I'm telling you I did what I did next. But as soon as this dude tried to question me, tried to question my intentions, tried to question my integrity basically, at this point, I was there. I turned to this guy and I said, what are you trying to say, man? I mean, what are you really trying to say? Do you know me at all? You're going to sit here and question what I'm doing, trying to enjoy my night with my wife. I don't even know why I'm talking to you. And now it was me 
on the serious rah rah aggressive stuff and this is something that I don't go out here looking for this type of stuff but for the love of God if I'm out with my wife and you try to disrespect me you've already disrespected me numerous times before I reach this breaking point is what, you, is what I'm going to consider this before I've reached this breaking point you have already disrespected me numerous times cutting your eyes at my wife making me feel uncomfortable you're making my wife feel uncomfortable I should have just absolutely punished this dude right there in the restaurant that is exactly what I was was ready to do wanting to do my wife is literally grabbing my leg like Joe leave it alone this dude's drunk this dude there's something wrong with him maybe it's drugs harder than just the weed that he was just talking about I go from zero to a hundred real quick in this moment and this dude immediately just hey man I didn't I didn't mean to disrespect you I didn't I didn't mean dude you've been disrespecting me this entire conversation dude tells me he he didn't mean to, to disrespect me. And you know what? I do try to calm down. I do. I do. I do. I go back and I'm like, look, man, you know what? It was nice talking with you. I'm going to enjoy my dinner with my wife now. And I try to get back out of this conversation. I try to just get back to the time that I'm trying to spend with my wife. Our food comes. She can't even eat right now because she's all messed up from this situation. This, this ain't right. So I'm trying to make conversation with my wife. And then this dude starts talking to me again. You know, mind you, the whole time, I'm sitting down at the bar. My wife's sitting right beside me. This dude is literally, like, standing almost over top of my wife. Dude asked me, he says, uh, I guess he's just trying to make small talk at this point. But he says, so what are you doing this weekend? I'm looking this dude dead in his eyes. I said, I'm going to spend time with my family. He says, well, where are you going? Why are you asking me all of these questions? Dude, I don't know you. Why are you asking me all of this? Hey, man, look, I'm just, I'm just, I was just asking. You know what, man, again. It was nice to meet you. Hey, have a good night, man. Have a good night. And you know, at this point, I'm, I don't know. I want in a good spot though, for sure. And if I feel like you're trying to intimidate, interrogate, disrespect me, my wife, I'm not gonna play that. I'm not gonna play with you and I'm gonna shut it down real quick. And if you don't shut it down, I'm telling you, you're gonna take it to a place you don't wanna take it to. No tough guy here. But I promise you, I'm going to do my damnedest to... After this second time where I've basically had to get loud with this dude, like literally get super aggressive with this dude, he immediately like gets up and darts off. Now he doesn't leave the restaurant. Uh, my wife thinks that what he did was he ran off to the bathroom. He had a book bag on. I don't, and I don't know why he did that. You know, did he dart off to go get high? Was he like not in the right state of mind already from the beginning of this? Did he dart off to this restroom to pull something out of his book bag? I don't know. You know, but we got up out of there. I paid the bill. My wife, she was shook up by the whole situation. And we, and we left. When we walked out of the restaurant, I'm super observant. I'm looking all over trying to see if this dude going to try to come out and like maybe attack us, maybe ambush us. And, and I hope you don't think I'm being like overly paranoid saying these things. But this situation was, as my wife best described this, this was a creepy situation to be in. This guy already looked somewhat deranged and not in the right state of mind. Again, your eyes are super dilated. I don't know how long you've been sitting at this bar drinking for. You're obviously drunk probably among other things and you know when I tweeted out what I tweeted out last night like you know I, I almost beat this guy up I almost fought this guy tonight and that's what it was you know because as soon as I began to get aggressive with this dude I mean I'm ready to come out of my chair but as soon as I began to get aggressive with this dude all he would have had to do was just say anything that struck me the wrong way and I was taking flight and there won't gonna be no turning back. I don't care where I'm at. I don't care what the repercussions were gonna be. I wasn't thinking about none of that last night. I was thinking about protecting my wife. I was thinking about you ain't gonna sit here and disrespect me in public. You ain't gonna sit here and disrespect my wife. And you know, it's a situation like this that just, especially after that happening last night, me being able to sleep, wake up with a clearer state of mind. It's a situation just like that that makes me realize I still got a lot of growing to do. I still got a lot of growing up to do, a lot of maturing to do. Because this guy took me back immediately to the old me. And had it been completely the old me, 
I wouldn't be sitting right here filming this video. I'd either be in a hospital, I'd be in a jail. I'm just glad it didn't turn out that way. You know, win or lose. I'm not even gonna sit here and say like, I would've won it, I would've won this fight. I like to believe that I would've. I came to realize a couple of things from all of this. One, I definitely don't need to be engaging in any conversations with people who already appear to be a little off the rocker. And two, I don't need to be telling nobody what I do for a living because I, I kind of feel like me saying, hey, I'm a YouTuber, you know, contributed to this in, in some way. You know, I really don't like telling people who don't know me what I do for a living. And from now on, you know what I'm gonna tell people? I'm gonna tell people I do construction. I'm gonna tell people I do anything, but I ain't gonna tell them this. I ain't gonna tell them the truth. I just wanna wrap this up and say, you know, again, this ain't nothing that I'm proud of. This ain't nothing I'm trying to glorify. But you know, when I tweeted this out last night and then the Twitter storm of craziness followed from that, a lot of people commenting, a lot of people trying to show support. This morning I tweeted out that I was gonna tell this full story and you know, a couple of people tweeted back to me saying, you know, the fact that you didn't do this, I mean, that's a really good thing, but also, you know, I know what it would be like if I was in that situation and I know I would wanna react the exact same way. And because you didn't react that way and it ain't because I didn't want to. I just gotta be clear about that because I was ready and I was weak. You know, had I done that, that would have been an absolute, that would have been the dumbest thing I could have ever done. And I want all of you to know that just as I got to know that. Because I done came too far in my life to let something so minute, something so trivial, trick any of this up. And I, I, I have to keep that in mind. You know, when you're serving time, disrespect is something that you got to handle immediately. You got to nip that in the bud immediately. But I ain't serving time no more. You know, and some things that I carried with me through my time serving time, I notice from time to time are harder to let go and get rid of than others. So I guess the last thing I want to say is this was definitely like eye-opening to me. And this morning I wake up embarrassed but also humbled at the same time. And I just wanted to tell you guys about that.